Hello and welcome. So today I'm actually going to do a little bit, thing a little bit different, and no, it's not another Q and A, but it is actually a little bit of what I want to call warning stories. The warning stories I'm about to tell you are things that actually happened to me and other people I know, including my fiance, who I will not be using people's real names because I still believe that's a bad idea to ever do that. But if you ask me who these people are in private, I may tell you. Especially if you live in the Vancouver, Washington area. And uh, one person, I probably will use their real name because he is a registered sex offender. For minors. Yeah. My first story I'm going to tell you is actually... It happened back when I lived in California. I knew fabulous group. They were great. I loved going to coven meetings with them and I never had a problem. What I did have a problem with was uh, it was this one person that was kind of creepy to everyone and we had asked him to stop showing up. Well, this person kept driving past my house after they found out where I lived. They kept driving past uh, one of our head uh, priestesses' homes and uh, then escalated to the people that they knew with phones. In this matter, the cops did get called and they did get arrested because it was harassment and threatening them. But one thing you have to remember, just like with Christianity, just like with Judaism, just like with being Mormon, there is always going to be one to a handful of people that aren't the best people in the world. Keep that in mind, it's with all religions, it's with all walks of life, it's with all groups, LGB, straight, whatever you are, there's always going to be people that aren't the best. You've heard cases online and I've seen videos of people that are crazy regardless of the religious stance. Um, look at the people who do mass shootings and say it's in God's name or kill you because you believe in God. Yeah. So every group has them. They're the fanatics. The story I'm going to tell you actually happened to me a few years ago, and I'm glad I was able to walk away from the situation with positive memories and still some friendships intact. I had made my way up here, and I was ended up moving out from where I was originally, which was a very bad place to be physically and spiritually and mentally. And I moved in with a good friend and his roommate at the time uh, who went by the name Mystic. No red flags at that point. And they were both my friends at the time so I didn't see anything wrong with it and I was in there um, excuse me sorry. I was in their um, D&D groups and stuff like that. But uh, then my other roommate started getting more spiritual and less traditional religion, which is fine. And he knew I was pagan. He came to me. We talked. I gave him a few books that I had, which he liked, um, but he found them to be more helpful with spells and how to do and beginner things, which it was for him at least. And he got the help of a dreamwalker, which she is an amazing woman. I still talk to her to this day. She is adorable. And our other roommate decided, hey, let's start a coven. So we invited a few of our pagan friends to join. So when Mystic did this, he pretty much pushed himself to the center of everything. 
to where he was always in charge. No one else really had another opinion on what was going on. No one else could really lead anything unless we pushed it. Which my other roommate, uh, we'll call him... Dasgrid Brian. For now, he stepped up and actually said, hey, I want to leave a, medita a meditation or two, which his meditations I like better than uh, Mystic's. And uh, Mystic went off to this school thing in Canada for two, three weeks. I don't remember what it was. And then uh, after that, he uh, became a lot more power hungry. Hypersephony. And uh, I found out a lot more about his past. And then I realized after he was trying to do a spiritual thing on me that all the wards and shields that I had did not ever kick off when he was around. If anything, it felt like they were on more. And uh, I find out later on that he was arrested, convicted, and went to jail for statutory rape of a minor, even though the girl was saying that it was fine, but her parents did not. And that was in Florida. When he moved here, he was still a bit shady. He convinced at least two of the girls in the coven that were kind, sweet people to sleep with him. And even pushing one to a relationship she did not want. <laughs> Say hello, Persephone. And, uh, we finally had it when one of the girls he convinced into his bed was actually not only a good friend of mine, but somebody who uh, Brian was interested in. And it was just the tip of the iceberg there. We started finding out more things. And at that time, Brian had gotten custody of his son. Um, he was about two at the time. He's a lot older now and won't stop growing. A little sprout. And uh, so Brian and I decided we were going to get out of there. And a lot of the people in the coven stopped coming. Well, we were told by a few other spiritualists and uh, some very strong mediums and seers that we had some work to do before we left there. It felt like a black ick was drenched on us, even when we bathed and kept clean, and that was one thing he never really did. He maybe showered once every two weeks. This man smelled like death. And we didn't start noticing that till later on, because he wore a lot of stuff to cover it up. And so, uh, without him knowing, we went to the circle thing that he made in the backyard, which was a grand power, and uh, we cut the cords that were binding us in our corners, which for me there was four cords, because he had me move from fire to stone to the goddess position, to uh, center fire. For Brandon, it was Brian, I mean, it was equal amounts as well. But we cut everybody's connection from that, so no one would have a connection anymore in there. He didn't know this. And I took a look at the house before we left and I realized all the wards and protections that I had up and the same with Brian were the only thing keeping the ick from getting into the walls and causing this house to be just disgusting. We got out of there, got a new apartment and I helped more with the kid and Brian dove more into other groups and stuff like that. 
he, Mystic, was arrested for having child pornography on his laptop later on. And then his sister proceeded to harass people who put out there that, yeah, he was in jail again. Because people were asking us where he was, and we found him by simply running a Google check on his biological name. Which I'm not giving out his biological name, I'm giving out the name he went by, Mystic. Because I'm that person, and if anyone else knows who this person is, you'll understand why I'm doing this and having a little bit of respect for his family. I still feel bad for everything they went through because of him. My next story is kind of what happened with Brian afterwards and my now fiancé as well. No, they were never together or they were never anything. The second one was uh, another group they got involved with. And at first they wanted me to join. Brian did. But I spent more time at home with his kids so he could go out and do this stuff because I would experienced more than once. Like with the company in California, which I miss them, especially Sunshine. But after a while, I started noticing a huge difference, and so did he. It, again, was focused around mostly one person. But it felt warm and comfortable because of the person she was with. And... It was okay. I didn't mind seeing them. I didn't mind talking to them. And sometimes I went to little potlucks with them and everything. I met quite a few good friends there. And uh, I started noticing their numbers dwindling. I was a little curious why. And then I was told pretty much if I wanted to join, I had to do my year and a day over by her rules, her standards. I was told I had to pretty much forget everything I knew and rethink everything into hers and right there was a red flag for me because I don't believe that you should have to follow a strict guideline to your beliefs when it's your beliefs. Being told that everything that you've learned was wrong is not something anyone wants to hear or likes to hear. I don't either but I will admit it when I realize, hey, it's a different point of view. Hey, I may be wrong in this one too. But being told everything I learned was hogwash and wrong, and that everything anyone ever told me beforehand was just horrible, that's where the problem was. I watched that relationship between her and another person deteriorate to the point of he destroyed the bed he bought that she was using and forcing him to sleep on the couch. And then he moved back out and reunited with his ex and his kids. Which, good for him. He doesn't need to put up with that kind of crazy. Then she got with somebody who was as damaged as she was. Which started her spiral downhill. I feel bad for her and I want nothing but the best for her. And also for the person she's with. But... There came a point where he was separated, Brandon, Brian, I mean, was separating himself from people and them. And he ended up moving the higher up in Washington. I had moved with my fiance to a different place. And I suggested she do the same, especially after Halloween, which rule with that. She said that, oh, no one can meditate more than 10 minutes, which I know to be a lie. I've meditated over two, three hours, but it felt like less than 10 minutes. So even I know that a person's limitation is not limited to what somebody else says. And as that, we stopped going. Then uh, we pretty much started breaking ties with them, deleting them on Facebook, blocking them. And... For about three months, my fiance and I hit a spurt of neither of us could get over being sick. I was hit with uh, bronchitis pretty hard, three times in a row almost. Then they diagnosed me with bronchi uh, chronic bronchitis, which 
canon does happen and I still get it. I can get it just by walking outside and breathing the air. Then uh, she was just miserably sick. The bad kind. And then after three months, it was done. We ended up going to something called the Vampire Ball, which is amazing, put on every year. And uh, we try to go every year since we found out about it. And uh, we saw her there. We said hi, we were kind, we were cordial. But she looked horrible. And I felt so bad. And so did the gentleman she was with now. It was just like, if you feel that bad and you know you look that bad, why would you leave your house? I mean, you would look at her like, are you sure you're okay? I haven't heard or seen her since then. We got over being sick pretty well. We bummed back in the last three years, have, well, two years, have been very kind to us. And we were thinking that she might put a small hex on us and it came back on her three folds, which can happen. But those are just two of the wondering stories that I wanted to share with people because you don't know who you run into. And sometimes an internet search is a good thing. And sometimes following your gut feeling is a great thing as well. But just be careful out there because there are people who will take advantage of you, who will lie to you, and who will try to manipulate you. I'm sorry if any of these stories sound well winded. But just keep in mind that not everyone in every religion is trustworthy. But there are a lot of people out there that are very trustworthy. Like I said, my first coven was amazing. And uh, one of the ladies in there, I remember her the most. Because her mother and how she was with her son. And I knew her as Sunshine. And she was just the sweetest person ever and willing to help you at a drop of a dime. And uh, everybody in that coven was that way. And they expressed that they wanted everyone to at least try to lead. Find a group or make one where it's everyone's equal, nobody is above another. And you'll find perfect harmony in that. When somebody says, well, I'm a level four Reiki master or a class A wizard or sorcerer of this level and you need to respect what I'm saying and do everything as I say. Sometimes is a warning sign of that's not right nor fair. Even if you are new to everything, everybody should still be considered equal and for the knowledge they have. And others should be willing to pass on their knowledge without forcing you to do something that you've already done or telling you that you're wrong because you're never wrong. Spiritual and beliefs are in yourself. And when somebody says you're wrong about that, Stop and look at them and go, no, that's my perspective of it. Your perspective is different. Yes, I've had to do that a few times. So with that, I leave you with a smile and happy memories and fondness of the ones that you love and care about and the people who have made you well, who you are today. Even with those experiences, they help mold people. And it can happen to anyone. But just remember this one thing. As long as there's light, as long as there's love, as long as there's good people and good times, you can never go wrong. And never hate. Hate is such an ugly thing to do and say. And you can dislike, but hate burns your soul and others. And it's something you should not waste your time on. I'll leave you th with that. And I will say this. Blessed be Mary all. Remember the circle is ever going. It may be open. But it's not broken. 